we're going to start. We do have a quorum. We've decided we have five. They hear us? No, I can't tell. Yes, they can hear us. Paul? Oh, there. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do is approve the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Thank you, Brian. I'll second. Thank you, Len. <laughs> uh, we're going to approve last month's meeting minutes. Oh, Aye. vote. Aye. 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 The agenda. Aye. And then uh, citizen communication. I think we do have some citizens. Gary, did you want to say anything? Uh, we can't hear you. I sure you're on mute right now. This is Sherry Ryan. I'm driving, and so I just wanted to call in and listen to your guys' meeting. I've never listened to it. Um, I'm just a resident of Scott Poose and um, just active member in you know politics and stuff. And so I just wanted to check in and see about your guys' committee and what's going on. Thanks. Oh, hey, fantastic. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Brian wanted to make a change. He wanted to add a topic since we have a pretty skinny agenda. So he would like to propose a topic. Can you just talk. Brian, just talk about it. But we, didn't, we wouldn't vote on it today, anyhow. We would come back for, for the next meeting to vote. I'll leave that up to you. I think we can. I think we can squeeze it all in. No day. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly room in the agenda. Okay. okay. Cool. I'm going to add you to 2.9. Wow. I can't yeah. 2.9 9 is now Brian. It'd be 3.1. I don't. On for new, new business. business. Thank you, you John. <laughs> oh. What one point five or three? Just three point one. No. No. <laughs> okay. So, who is speaking for the city? Huel, must be you. That would be me. Uh, I'm filling in here for Isaac uh, today. Yeah, Warrior couldn't be with us today either, so I'm just going to go over some of the highlights that she sent over. Um. Short list of the items that planning department's working on include the planning for the annual town meeting, which is going to be held on April 30th. Um, in, in terms of a, a, the actual specific time, uh, I'm not sure that's been determined yet. Main focus will be kicking off the community visioning component for the 50 year plan and hearing an update on the housing needs analysis process. Um, Second bullet here is staff has kicked off the 50 year plan and the first stakeholder advisory committee will be held on March 15th. Public is welcome to attend those and we have a project page on the city website under our community. If you want to stay involved with what's going on, if you need some help finding that uh, just feel free to uh, email Isaac or myself. Uh, see viewers market expansion site development review will be heard by the planning commission on March 10th. Uh, that proposal is for the construction of a new auto sales facility and associated amenities and removal of the existing buildings on site. Uh, staff is reviewing the second submittal of a site development review application and sensitive lands uh, development permits for a new nearly 12,000 square foot warehouse and a 3,600 square foot office on 18 acres located in the northwest section of the city, a light industrial property. Um, with Oxbow. Uh, Oxbow would move their headquarters from their current location on Gilmore Road uh, to this parcel. Once the application has been deemed complete, it will be put on the Planning Commission's agenda. And then staff is still waiting for the second submittal of the items related to the food cart pod site development review application. Um, if you have any other development related questions, feel free to reach out to Mary Oliver Joseph, city planner. Um, in terms of updates uh, from other parts of the city, um, not nothing in particular standing out from the public works side of things. Um, we've got the construction work going ongoing on Old Portland Road. I 
Sidewalks, yep. So they're essentially installing sidewalk infill uh, on both sides between Dutch Canyon and the totem pole, uh, as well as some uh, stormwater infrastructure. Let's see, I know the new police chief um, is going to be starting soon. I think his first day is going to be towards the is the second week in March. Um, that's all I've got uh, from the city side. Is he local? To... I'm not sure. No, he's not. Is he from Westland? Yeah. Well, he's from somewhere in Clackamas County. I forget. I'm reading in the paper. <laughs> Anything about the uh, proposed subdivision across from Veterans? Yeah. No, I I know that uh, mm -hmm. from what Lori has told me that you know the information from that community meeting that the developer had with the neighborhood will will be in their app their final application is and pardon me if i don't know, understand or know the exact terminology there but um yeah i can't speak to that just i don't know anything about it um and as far as i know minutes haven't been generated from that meeting at least that would have been on the developer it wasn't the city that put that on so Curious. That subdivision about forty-five houses, or they said forty-eight in the meeting. Forty-eight. All you're up. We can't hear you. How about now? Oh yeah, perfect. Seems to be a little sticky today. Uh, good afternoon. A uh, few things. Uh, we did meet. Um, we weren't able to meet uh, last month. I wanted to update you on the on the county grant program. Uh, the impact in Scapoose. Uh, small businesses received. Uh, there were ten grants, uh, seventy one thousand uh, dollars. In nonprofits, there were three grants, uh, nineteen thousand dollars. Uh, and that was for Scapoose organizations. That was from a total of uh, $490,000. Um, we've got uh, in uh, under the heading of grants, there is a Business Oregon grant program out there for guides and outfitters, $10 million for emergency relief for guides and outfitters. So if you know somebody who is one, um, they need to go to the Business Oregon uh, webpage and, and look that up. I have no idea what the demand will be for that, but it's a pretty good chunk of money. Um, we uh, are marketing uh, with, uh, in cooperation with the city of Scapoose and, and OMIC and the PUD, um, continues the site selector. I don't, I don't think I can access the chat. I could put the link in, but the, uh, the Oregon issue of Site Selector Magazine is out. Our double double truck ad is in that, and um, it kind of sets sets the baseline for uh, a couple of uh, cooperative marketing initiatives around uh, manufacturing advanced and additive manufacturing uh, for Columbia County, and that also includes a parallel effort with the uh, with all of the workforce partners, uh, OMIC PCC Training Center, OMIC. Uh, Northwest Education Service District, uh, Northwest Oregon Works, and we're putting together a uh, uh, the workforce aspect uh, around uh, marketing to employers as well as trainings uh, around workforce and manufacturing. Um, what else we've got here? Um, last week, uh, a couple of things uh, kicked off, and a couple of things happened. Uh, First of all, the uh, the COLPAC Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy is something they have to do about every two or three years in order to qualify for EDA, USDA, all the federal uh, economic de development funding. That process kicked off. I uh, had our had our first meeting on that, as well as the countywide um, HNA, similar to what Scapoos is doing, but this is this is countywide largely focusing on the smaller uh, smaller core cities as well as the unincorporated area um, and uh, that not only not only uh, impacts uh, recruitment of business expansion of business but also uh, labor force and workforce recruitment 
Um, the uh, last week also was the rail corridor uh, report. Uh, session two occurred. Uh, they gathered a fair amount of input, and uh, there's a session three, I think, in about a month. We've got another advisory meeting, so that's something to watch. There, uh, there's some priority sites uh, all along the Highway 30 corridor, including Scapoose. Um, let's see, a couple other things. Uh, also last week, we had uh, Senator Wyden. Wasn't well publicized, but he had his uh, 998th town hall. And uh, we were able to uh, get a word in edgewise about um, keeping his eye out for the funding and the comprehensive um, budget bill that they voted the night before on the, on the framework. We've got about $175,000 request in that for the Small Business Development Center. And uh, last week we did uh, announce the new director of the uh, Small Business Development Center is Jason Mose, who many of you may know from uh, Inroads Credit Union. He um, made it through... I think we had 36 applicants from five across five states and about a three tier panel interview process. And so uh, he certainly earned it and uh, we're looking forward to him starting March 1st. He will uh, he will be essentially uh, working remotely for the first uh, first few weeks as he does the onboarding. But um, as Commissioner Garrett knows, we're, we're talking with the county about a permanent home for not only uh, the small business center, but also uh, the economic team in the John Gum building. Um, back to congressionals, I learned yesterday uh, that you all may know uh, Ali Maeda, who has worked for Congresswoman Bonamici for about six years, uh, is leaving. She's, uh, I bring that up because she's been extremely helpful on, on local issues and certainly on economic development. And uh, so we're kind of watching that carefully because you hate to have that kind of turnover. You understand why it happens, but you hate to to have it have it go on um and so we'll be working with them closely to onboard with the uh with the new person and uh last thing is um, next renewables received a unanimous uh favorable decision on both their land use permits from the county board of commissioners i think the written opinion is coming out uh in march and uh, deq can now release its permit uh for public comment DSL can release its permit for uh, public comment. And so that's that's a project that would be located way up north, but with about a 3,000 person construction uh, workforce and about a 240, 250 person permanent workforce, there isn't any any community in the in the county that's not going to be uh, positively impacted from, from that. So um, those are the things, those are some of the things that we're working on, but just wanted to provide those updates. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, so John Gum, the John Gum project for the county is is uh, more of a work facilities um, renovations, not just John Gum. First part of that is the new public health center uh, that the next month ish is going to break ground at the bottom floor of the courthouse annex land development used to be um, I'm not sure if last time but you guys know but land development has moved temporary new office um, so that uh, space is just about ready to tear into uh, work on finalizing the facility there uh, the county just issued a or is just about to issue an RFP for a hospital study um, feasibility study to see uh, what options uh, there might might be and how much it would take and cost and where it would go, but looking at the St. Helens area, so putting out an RFP for consultant to me, um, see where that goes, um, what comes out of that, but the RFP should go out fairly soon. Uh, Commissioner Magruder is uh, looking for um, folks to join her on a water forum they're evaluating the county's everything to do with water but water supply water quality um it's part of a statewide effort i i don't know when that's going to kick off but fairly soon i think she's still using the group of uh, committee members to help out in that process uh, we did just get a presentation yesterday um, from the watershed folks um out 
E. coli, uh, elevated E. coli in the uh, um, watershed areas throughout the county. One to maybe think about would be Fisher Park. It's used quite a lot, and over the last decade, the E. coli levels have risen quite a lot. So that will be looked at in the water study as well. But sure, uh, um, actually, a county park have a sign, but properly the beaver bark there, where a bunch of people swim, and anywhere down in the lower areas of the uh, watershed, the E. coli le levels are uh, higher than they are up on the hills. So maybe something to keep in mind for recreating. Um, it's, uh, um, as Paul said, next renewables, I think it's March 23rd is the official uh, date that it comes to the board. The official approval, it's at uh, tentative approval right now and uh, working out some that is looking good. We're looking forward to that project being successful. Um, then the county's uh, uh, in getting into our budget process now, so uh, it's going to take up a lot of folks. Uh, department in the county budgets next uh, months and balance budget for the next year. At the old Comcast office off of Port Avenue, Let's say 445 Port Avenue. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, right. <laughs> any, any idea where the cause of the uh, pollution with the water? With the, it's got the they don't know exactly. And part of that is, you know, there's some theories for uh, septic systems, the hills getting to their um, potentially causing contamination, uh, animals, humans, you know, um, that's all up in the air. So all they've done is um, done quite a lot of testing over the last, let's say, uh, 2008 and starting to compile enough data to show that it is, does seem to be, um, E. coli levels seem to be um, growing. So um, they're looking for uh, resources to do more testing because the level of testing they've done so far hasn't been able to pinpoint. They've um, it's been fairly thorough, but uh, what would be needed to pinpoint the actual cause? Um, they're not there yet. So. Are you going to post the area then down by the uh, bridge? It's about uh, yesterday, that was kind of brought up that um, some kind of a awareness campaign. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, when it's warmer in the summertime, the <laughs> levels are higher. Um, so it, it's probably something we'll want to do. And it's also. You know, it never was tested before, and <coughs> I'd be surprised if there wasn't higher E. coli levels you know, 30 years ago. We just didn't know about them. Um, but uh, and, and if they're getting higher now, trying to figure out why. Let's see, how long has it been since we've had? Oh, what? The last, I mean, who, uh, let's see. Uh, the one off of Millard Road um, was the special district in charge of that, and that all fell apart. I don't know if you guys remember that, that had to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. you might help me out you, with the year. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the year, but it was so well. No. How much is the consulting contract to look into? I didn't get my question. <laughs> How long's it been? Uh, well, um, when the district was dissolved, uh, that was kind of the culmination of uh, the district dissolving. Was um, we did not call it. Well, let's. What is that term again? We we're more than thirty-five miles outside. Certificate of, of need. Certificate of need right. uh, wasn't met, and I think the rules were changed there. It was a little bit before my. I'm paying attention to a lot of this stuff, but there's a certificate of need requirement. Um, it screwed up the location of that hospital, and the district ended up resolve, uh, dissolving you know, over that whole deal. So I want to say it's probably been more than ten years, or more than that, but more than ten been, years. Some and of the folks are having it's really been seriously looked at. Yeah, the certificate of need really wasn't the district's fault. No, it wasn't. The, it was the, fed, a, the feds changed their rules. Yes, it was a, a change the, to the rules on where hospitals can be located. Hold on. So, 
I just want to remind folks to speak into the mic. Some of the folks on 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 the line are having a trouble hearing us. Okay. Need to get closer to your mic. That might be you. I'm not sure. Well, what because what, one of the other issues that happened with that last go around was getting us an effective sponsor, and and there was some resistances with legacy. Yep. There's there's. I don't know how all this hospitalization process works, but you have to have a, a sponsor. I know we've even looked at, at sponsorship out of Longview, and, and we had really tried to figure out who was going to be the player, and one was pushing against the other, and of course OHSU is in, now in the neighborhood and such. That So everybody everybody wants their piece of that lemon pie. And, and so you know, I think that's really before we start analyzing, we got to go find out if we have a sponsor, and, and you know we've got the, the the process because otherwise you could do like we did the last time and run into a stone wall after X number of years and a lot of dollars. Yeah, I hear you. Um, you know, uh, local governments. Um, we could talk all day that we hire consultants, figure out lots of stuff for us, and sometimes you wonder if that's the best way to go about uh, things. That is going to be one of the things that. Uh, you know that we're looking for in a proposal we don't have a budget yet to answer yeah. your question because okay. um, it's an rfp to see who's out there that might help with the process we budgeted a hundred thousand dollars out of arpa funds um for that process um so i'm assuming um you know for this sort of study you can get up into the tens of thousands of tens of thousands of dollars fairly quick and i believe 100k was the off the hip budget um uh, deciding how to spend ARPA funds, so it's a it's a project. Oh, that qualifies um, for that that funding. That's that's how we'll see what we get for RFPs. Does does farm home? Does I'm sorry. Does Columbia City qualify for farm home? You know, I'm not sure about farm home. Is that any like federally federally qualified? Healthcare facility no, or a different farm home. Farm, with farm home has a different process. They they have almost the same functions that FHA HUD has. Okay. Only they have it in smaller communities and communities that qualify. Now, Columbia City's income may be too high for farm home. Uh, I know yeah. years ago at Scapoose, I could I could do farm home transactions, and, and uh, but now obviously it's past that economic stand, but. It's something worth looking at because, again, it's the federal government, and they, you know, they they, they underwrite the loan. They, they may not make the loan, but it comes with a certain with the underwriting. So it's just sell it to any bank. I know the it's called the FQHC, federally qualified healthcare facility status, that is a helps you qualify for federal funding. Um, and there's not many areas. There's upper class. Can I has one and and. Yeah, missed. They think could qualify for some of those areas, but we are in a weird spot when it comes to. Uh, well, that's why I was thinking about Columbia City because yeah. it's right next door and it, it's incorporated, and so it might have some privileges that St. Helens or Scappoose couldn't acquire. And I know in the in the RFP draft RFP that we just um, out, uh, we were looking essentially in that Deer Island to St. Helens range, thinking that was going to be fighting if there was any chance of it. Oh, I didn't think Michael was here, but I him still is. I can't see him all. Heidi Rawls is with us from oh, Hey Heidi. Hi everyone. Hey, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update on what we're doing in the Scapoose area. Uh, we've got all of our equipment moved out of the way for that uh, the construction project on Old Portland Road. Uh, for the Scapoose Lighting Replacement Project, we're a little over halfway done. Most all of the 100 watt lights have been replaced and we're moving to replacing the higher wattage lights. And then it looks like in March we will be going to our board for authorization to purchase the EV chargers as we move forward um, in preparation for installing those chargers over by the library in Scapoose. That's all I have for today. Okay, um, I wanted to mention Earth Day, which is going to be the 24th of um, April in Heritage Park. It's a Saturday morning. It's going to be a half day. Um, I'm not actually on the committee, but I've, as usual, gotten sucked into the events maelstrom. 
Um, so um, there's two projects, community service projects that are going to happen that morning. One is working on cleaning up landing. And the other one is a watershed council removal of invasive species project. Um, we hope to have a lot of people there for that. The library will be doing um, programs in the park in association with master gardeners related to Earth Day and plantings. Also, all of the uh, improvements that we bought with ARPA funds for the park, all the equipment has arrived. So. Hopefully that will all be installed by Earth Day too, since there's solar chargers involved with that and some other stuff. And we are planning on doing movies in the park again um, in August. And I hope to, I've got a, a grant proposal out, so I hope to get uh, some money to improve the activities that go along with that. Yeah. Thank you. Here, Josh. Here, you all. Okay. Uh, PCC is here, Amanda. Hi, everybody. Um, we've got a couple things going on at PCC OMIC right now. One is that we're getting ready for our ribbon cutting ceremony. It's much delayed and a little smaller than we had hoped, um, but that is coming up. We also have most if not all of the area high schools are signed up for preview days at omic so they'll get a little sampling of what we have going on at omic what they can sign up for maybe some things to get excited for for fall for our graduating seniors um so we're really excited about that and trying to make it special it's uh we're right now up in the air if it's going to be in person or online um but we've got it planned out so it'll work both ways. So hopefully that will really help boost some of the local interest in PCC OMIC. What's the date on that? Um, it is happening in March and April. I think we have about five Wednesdays and we take up to 30 students at a time. And that's it for us. to the port, Ms. Nancy Ward. Hello, Nancy. Hi there, everybody. Um, woke up to snow this morning. That was certainly a surprise. Uh, from the port, I think the most uh, important thing to talk about in, in relationship to Scapoose was the rail study committee meeting that happened on the 17th. And there we had um, proposed changes to three crossings in the county, one of them being High School Way. Uh, really appreciated the, uh, the input from uh, Scapoose. Both Alex and Chris were real important in this meeting, added a lot to, uh, to the conversation. We were also very pleased for the first time to actually have a high level person from the rail at the meeting, uh, a new director of operations, his name is Craig Ashenfelter, and Craig uh, was asked quite a few questions, uh, and many of us had many more questions to go. So we invited him to come to a future port meeting. I will keep you advised of that. Um, he's aware, certainly, of the consternation caused by uh, tra rail traffic and also made us made it very clear that his ability to uh, be very forthcoming about a lot of things like the timetable of the rail is curtailed. Of course, we all know that, but uh, within the parameters of what is allowed, uh, trying to explain what a big benefit it would be to all of us if we had a little better timing of the rail rather than coming through at high traffic times. So, like I mentioned, he will be coming to a port meeting. I will let you know when that happens. And also, speaking of rail, um, Chris Efert, CEO of Next Renewable Energy, 
was at our meeting last night. Um, he answered, was asked and answered a lot of the questions that came up as a part of listening to the presentation that they gave to the county and uh, finding out that uh, some of the contingency plans they have are, uh, are not something we were aware of at the port. So going over those in detail, um, uh, being assured that the provisions of the lease will be followed. Uh, one of those provisions is that there will be no unit trains. Another being that to the best of our ability, we will work together on these manifest trains if they get to be large. The, he definitely, uh, next is not looking to use rail as the primary source of um, transportation, obviously. They pick the port because they want to use the river. But in order to put their project together and to uh, make sure that all their bases were covered, they had to look at things like if the river was shut down, which came as news to me because I'm new enough uh, to Columbia County to not be aware of the fact that that has happened in the past. But knowing that all of these contingencies are just that, they are um, moves that would be made only if necessary. So anybody who would like more information about um, the meeting last night, feel free to get in touch with me. We, we had it recorded. We can get you a recording of it. And uh, Chris Efert will continue to come back and keep us apprised as this project move, moves along. Um, he also was uh, made us, again, very aware of the difficulty of getting uh, projects permitted in Oregon and uh, also talked about how in other states that is certainly not the case. So to uh, working with the system in Oregon is uh, something that he is finding both daunting, but uh, something he is willing or the company is willing, of course, to continue moving forward. So we will keep you apprised also of everything that happens in that regard. Thanks so much. You know, <laughs> Thank you, uh, Wayne Rosenthal. Um, for years, we've talked about the need of a hotel motel in Scappoose, the possibility of the city providing some incentives to have that happen. We've all kind of waited and hoped that it would happen on its own. It hasn't. My corporate life, we were looking at a community to locate a business in. We would not locate if they did not have a hotel motel. We needed to have base levels of service that would include things like breakfast. Did not have to necessarily have to be a four-star hotel. We had to have a place where business-related uh, uh, people could stay. They could have breakfast. It would be comfortable. It did not have to be but it also could not be a Motel 6. If we did not have this type of facility, we would not locate there. It's that simple. Um, we had a list of things that we required. I think it was fairly common for most companies to require this. Um, because we haven't been able to get a Hotel Motel in Scappoose, um, talking about the possibility of maybe making a recommendation to council, they provide some incentives. And I'm totally open, and, and Lynn and I have talked a little bit about this in the past, to other ideas. The idea would be not to rob the city's coffers out of money that they would have to pay out of their pocket, but using the new economic activity from the hotel to help pay for the hotel in some ways. I want to throw this out as a baseline, but totally open to other ideas and suggestions. Um, I would throw out the idea that we would give them, a, a, make a recommendation to council to give a hotel motel a 75% reduction in transportation SDCs and a 50% rebate on their hotel tax for the first five years. That, that money would be eligible to go to infrastructure needs that are involved with the construction of the hotel that is not on the hotel site. So examples of that would be road improvements, sidewalk improvements, lighting improvements, those kinds of things. The idea behind this is that since if we didn't have the hotel, wouldn't have that tax revenue coming in, not taking money out of the city's coffers. 
Um, the reason why I specifically did not look at water or sewer infrastructure uh, SDCs is that the city has shortfalls in both those areas and will continue to have it. Road SDCs are really not a hard cost. Pays for road improvements, route scapoos to help offset the impact of this new thing. I personally believe that the hotel will actually reduce traffic, not increase it, because what it's going to do is it's going to prevent people from having to get hotels in Portland or St. Helens drive back and forth. So I don't really see a, a, a real loss there for the city. Um, that's the basic kind of idea. Um, and my thought was, is we're not, I'm not asking for a vote on this today or anything like that. I wanted to get the discussion started. I thought maybe at the next meeting we could put it on the agenda again. And uh, if we had a, if we could come up with a, you know, kind of a concise plan, that time we might ask for a vote. Um, I would recommend that we make a minimum star level of two and a half stars and minimum requirement that they serve breakfast. There's no breakfast. Corporate entities are not interested in having people stay there because they then have to shuffle them to restaurants, which they don't want to do. In the conference room. The yeah, conference room, I don't feel, I mean, I'm open to it if other people want to do that. I, conference room may elevate this to a bigger project than what we can get in Scapoos, the problem. Um, most small, like Best Westerns or stuff, they'll have at least some sort of small conference room. But like asking for a 50 person conference room, they kill the project. So I would let the free market decide that. We were, we were talking to Casey earlier. He said that the John Gum building should have some sort of area that could be used for meetings going forward, so that at least that would, facility would be in that county. Um, other people felt strongly about having that, a small conference room attached to it. That's fine. But I do think that would reduce our likelihood of getting somebody to place here. And when we were doing our site location for our, our company, we were a chemical company, we liked having conference rooms and we liked having a gym on site, um, but it wasn't a requirement. And other companies may have different requirements, so I'm not saying that this is completely standard. But I do know if we don't have a breakfast being served and it's not two and a half star or better, people will not be interested in it in corporate space. Um, so anyhow, I'd like to throw it out for discussion. Well, one thing that, you know, as far as the conference room, conference room or any other facilities, swimming pools or whatever else, that's really a determination of the hotel developer. Yeah. Because they'll have to look at the market and say, okay, the market is X deep and there's we're going to do 120 units or whatever those combinations are. And there's a lot of numerics that go into hotels. I got involved and financed a couple of them, so I've got some background with them. But it it uh, obviously in this community, uh, you know, Portland is now 275 a night for a hotel at the, the you know, at, a, at a quality place, Seattle is 325. San Francisco's 450. Other than that, hotel areas are, you know, it's a nice uh, usage of your time and money. So out here, we're probably looking at somebody that's going to be in the $140 range, $125 to $140 range. So you have to kind of back that number off into what you're looking for and what they can provide. And and do they want to be in the full food service business? That's another choice. And do we have locations for them? I mean, hotels are going to want to be on the highway or at least visible from the highway. And for instance, uh, uh, Second Street over by Les Schwab, I think the rail track and the crossing make that a difficult hotel hotel site. It's, you know, it's space-wise, it's, it's adequate, but there just aren't very many pieces of land. Steve Biddy's? Steve no, that was never the hotel site. Actually, the hotel site was is behind the uh, where the varsity was. The, there's there's two and a half acres back there. You've got you've got uh, restaurants. You've got easy access to everything in town, and you have light. So that uh, makes huh? and Starbucks and Starbucks. That's right. So yeah, so it it does have an accommodation, and and uh, you guys should build a hotel. Yeah, Fantastic. Right. Um, yeah. Good job. A couple other little thoughts I'd like to throw out there. <laughs> um, Hotel Motel is one of the highest default rates of commercial lending. Yep. And it requires, and because of that problem, they generally require 50% or more equity. equity in the project. Real money. So that's one of the reasons we haven't gotten one here, is because 
can't build a hotel motel with 20% down and, 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 and God help you. <laughs> so in the 08 crash, there was a huge defaults in hotels all across oh, the hotel yeah. country. Well, and it, and, it, and it caused a real problem. So that's why there's this hesitancy. So normally, I don't really push for subsidies or, or, or grants businesses because I believe in the free market. In this particular case, development at the rest of town, and also this is something that would really be nice for people that live here, where they could have family members come visit them, not necessarily have to stay at the home. Maybe they don't want oh. to live in grand the grandma's house because she has 15 cats. And they're allergic, <laughs> you know. So it, it provides exactly. something both for the community, but also provides something to help the airport and other parts of Skepoos develop. And and that's kind of the idea. And I and mm -hmm. I really feel like if we don't have a hotel motel, we are going to be extremely limited in the development we can attract out here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the exact size, the exact amenities. I, I don't really feel like it's our place to get into it, other than they have to be two and a half star or better. We have to provide breakfast. Um, those. The deal killers. If you don't have that, you won't. You won't corporate. I'll call the Best Western in St. Helens and find out what their average capacity is. Occupancy and yeah, yeah right, yeah, yeah. And, and I think they, I think they run pretty well. I think they're yeah, I think they're, they're, they're a lot. They're plus yeah. seventy. And we, and we would pull probably a few people that are heading to Portland that don't want to pay Portland prices. Yeah. And, and they spend the night here instead of driving that last 30 miles on their way from the coast to Portland. And that'd be fine. That'd help add, I'll pay for the hotel for the rest of the community to have access. Well, and, well, you'd have to have that business because there's not enough corporate business. Right, not right no, now. Not yeah. yet. Yeah, and that's, and that's the other reason also why I feel like we should offer some incentives because right now there's probably not quite enough to make it make sense because if it did make sense, it would have happened. So... We're just trying to push it over the line and kind of prime the pump so that so that we can help make this happen so that the airport can develop and other things in Skepoos area can develop and provide it. You know, one of the things we always I've always talked to people about economic development is it's supposed to provide benefits for the people that live here. And this would be a benefit for the people that live here. Should we create a subcommittee of people like us to solicit potential hotels well, to come here? Well, I, I think I think the, the First, well, if you would obviously, as our chairperson, you are more than welcome to create whatever <laughs> that you wish. But, um, I would think that the the important thing here would be to make try to have it on the agenda next meeting, and to try maybe mush around it a little bit, but try to come up with a proposal, the recommendation to council. I'm sure council will probably tweak whatever we recommend, and they may or may not choose to do it. But I think that it that it would be not good of us not to provide this as. If we had Walmart. if we had the trinket in our hand as we go talk to people, yeah, yeah, because yeah. talking to people is not really not going to do you a whole lot of good, yeah, unless you yeah. have something to offer, right? And like I said, you know, if, if the numbers really bounced out well right now, then we had interest rates as low as they were. The commercial paper was down to three and a half, three and three quarters percent for a while. If the numbers really um, worked well. There would have been one coming, so we're going to have to do something if we want this to happen, and. I, th I think of it as it's going to really help the airport and it's going to help the rest of the community as well. And it's kind of a win-win. There actually wouldn't be any money out of Scapoose's pockets. That's that's the whole idea here is we're picking incentives that actually don't take money so that we're not saying, hey, we can't fix your pothole because we're doing this. No. In fact, the city would get more tax revenue because they'd have the tax revenue on the hotel. They'd have the tax you know, part of the uh, hotel motel tax. They would also have all the STC and, and building permits for this project. So it, it seems to me like kind of like a win-win. There's two, one other thing I'd like to propose as part of that too, and that is that it's part of a franchise. That's for two reasons. One is if you're part of a franchise, you in theory have to meet certain standards to retain your franchise. And it would appear then on all the major travel sites. That's not a bad idea at all. I would have no opposition to that. It's decided by the group. By me. The city of St. Helens, their waterfront area, I know has been mentioned that they really want a hotel down there. Um, I know they've had a uh, developer quite interested in putting one down there if the infrastructure was put in. So it's kind of been put on the city to get the infrastructure put in. They're, they're making progress um, with the uh, waterfront. 
and like help to bring that infrastructure in. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, would I wonder how much of a difference would that make for the feasibility of a hotel here if they if they got one there? I know that they might be for different purposes, but just being proximity is that so close that you think it would cause an issue with feasibility here? You're you're probably talking about two different pro kinds of properties. I mean, that's probably the the nicest site in Columbia County, without question, which is the old mill site down downtown and, and so I and I I can't see somebody subverting it with a low quality property. I mean I could more I can more see a hotel with a condo with offices with marina the the, the, the you know the first cabin sort of property because that where else are you gonna find that? It's not gonna be repeated any place. And and I know that Tokola had been involved and in a couple others had been involved in looking at it. No, I think the market here, you know, if they build a 250 unit, this is still probably 100 or 110 units, and it's still part of the community. Yeah. And yeah, and, and this here could be as small theoretically as 65 or 70 units. Oh, yeah, it's it's all it's a, it's because that's off the highway. That's more of a destination, and yeah. this would yes. be, this would be more for travelers and for business people. Because first thing I did, I used to negotiate contracts with hotels for the company I worked for, and First thing I wanted to know was 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 price. The second thing I wanted to know was was does it meet our basic amenities? Right. And, and beyond that, I didn't really care. Yeah. I mean, it was always nice if they had extra amenities and extra nice things, but really what we were looking for is a place that we could put people at an affordable. We didn't care if they had a view. We didn't care if they, if, you know, if there was some. Well, we liked having a gym. Because people like to have that, and it made people happy. But beyond a gym and breakfast, I think the price point. I'm suspecting that that hotel would have a much higher price point than what we're talking about. Oh yeah, absolutely, and, absolutely, and, yeah, right. So, as a corporate traveler, unless you're the VP, you're going to Best Western. Oh we, yeah, right. Now the VP, we, we might lose a few VP stays. You know, to that hotel that was built, but we're not going to be taken from us, and we're not going to be taken from them. You all, can we Airbnb here? Is that okay? In the city of Skepus? Hey, I want to say there's some sort of language in the code about short term rentals, but I'd have to get back to you on that one. It's not something. That's what it's not Last something. Time I looked, there are Airbnbs listed in there. Yeah. I was curious, and Leonard and I were talking, and we weren't quite sure. I don't know if you know off the top of your head. What is, what is our hotel tax here? We were thinking it's like 8%, but we're not sure. What the uh, transient lodging tax is, the percentage for this county? I, I thought it was no, the city. The oh, for for the city. I I have it's no almost idea. 10%, I think. I think it's I think it's yeah. I think it's ten. Yeah. This RV park is one of the only customers. Right. right. So so okay. So we're looking at a nice chunk of change. If we give them half of that, that'd be five percent of their gross top of it. So that would help pay for some infrastructure needs without going into the city's. Uh, or, uh, oh, there's there's also a state tax, but it's like one point. Yeah, right. And obviously that would have to stay, but yeah, city wants close to the middle. So just so I understand, Brian, your proposal. So you want to propose this to council. That council offers an incentive to future hotel builders. What way does that? And I haven't, we haven't gone there yet. Okay. You're, right, you're, you're right about this. One other thing that there just hit me. There has to be somebody to town crier. There has to be town crier. One other thing that I didn't like mention, which we should probably include, is should probably include a number of years limit. Like this offer is good for three years, five years, something like that. Right. Not just something that's on the books. Or, so, so or it's good for first, first come, first. Well, it also would be first come, first serve. First yeah. come, first serve, right. Yeah. We, we don't need to create two failed hotels in this town, which I don't think. <laughs> yeah. um, better to have one successful. But um, Paul, Paul, in your experience with grants and processes, are there ever grants for for like the hotels in small communities like this that have that don't have a large population base that we, you know, it, it's a it's a necessity but a struggle. I've never heard of anything like that. The the grants tend to stay out of the hospital 
hospitality industry, uh, given the dynamics and and there was so much data about traveling and hospitality that that the the decisions on putting putting a hotel or a motel in some place and how many rooms is is they prove it out about nine different ways statistically before they do it. Uh, you need to look at the all you need to do is look at the convention hotel and it took them 20 years. Uh, even though you're drawing, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to to the facility next door, it took them 20 years to prove that out as a uh, as a viable investment. And even even so, the hotel community uh, thought it was overbuilding. So it's it's very 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 data driven uh, as to what what their what their uh, catchment circles are. I love and Horowitz study. That's what what you do. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, and, and this is this proposal is not necessarily a cure all. I just thought it would be a first step. No, it's a good it's a good idea. It's a good step. I mean, we gives us says we're looking at something and doing something and we can put the parts together. Also, uh, if you can hear me, this uh, it might not be relevant, but just um, just some information. About two weekends ago. Uh, a high school teacher put on a very large, very competitive youth basketball tournament in Scappoose. They used Peterson Gym, High School Gym, and Annex Middle School Gym. They got teams from Arizona, Nevada, California, Washington. Um, some former NBA players were coaching their kids on these teams. And uh, all of these families, all of the players flew into Portland and then stayed in Portland. Um, so that right there, if we want to have that type of economic um, activity, if we want to host these youth sports tournaments, um, some bigger events like that, then a hotel motel uh, would be a very, I think, important uh, factor into the equation. Don't forget the biggest tourist business around here. That's fishing on the river. Huh? No, no, that that's actually an ICBM thing. <laughs> the uh, the fishing on the river, you, you started in, in, you know, right now through through June, there might be two, three hundred, four hundred boats between uh, uh, Sylvie's Island Bridge and St. Helens and growing. And then people it, don't stay; they go home. They're not going to waste their good space in the ocean. Oh, we fill up campgrounds. Yes, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. This people come all over the salmon. Well, you get you get some you get some rooms rented from big events. You get some here for recreation. You get family. Then hopefully we get start getting some economic development out at the airport. That makes it real. Right. Plus, plus like the high schools. Keep in mind the high schools play teams like Tillamook. Right, which means you got an hour and a half drive at yeah. the end of something. It, it, it's a nightmare. It, it's a nightmare. It, yeah. So, so. Th I mean, we go to you. We used to go to Newburgh for softball tournaments every weekend. It's a, it's a long. Find a hotel. And they had a bunch. And, and, they, find a hotel. and that's a long drive. <laughs> uh, just one thing. I'm supposed to remind you that if you're not eating, you're supposed to wear your mask in here. Sorry, I hate not sound like mask police, but it's what. It's chewing. Good job. It's a slow eater. Okay, well, I think we're done. So, unless there's something else, uh, our next meeting is March 17th. Um, that's it. Unless somebody wants to bring something up. Do you all, has there been any uh, progress on goal setting from commissioners? In terms of when the city council is going to make their decisions on adopting those goals? Yeah. The last email I saw from Isaac said we had the same question from the Parks and Rec Committee. Um, they haven't yet scheduled their goal adoption. Uh, so it's not going to be the next meeting, which is on the 7th, March. Um, did not see it on the agenda for the 22nd, the meeting on the 22nd of March, but I can get back to you that and have Isaac get back to you once, once they've made that decision. Uh, I, I suspect they may discuss it uh, on the 7th when they want to make that decision. Then the I know that the next work session for discussing the ARPA funds is going to be on the 22nd of March. Um, I got about a third of the way through it when we 
Um, we first brought it back to them um, in December, and then it's their docket has just been really full. So, or excuse me, that was on January in the first meeting in January. So, it could take a couple of meetings to get through that stuff. So, I do have one quick comment when it comes to the ARPA funds. So I believe a few months ago, they committed to a couple of projects, the small business resource center, the new ambulance, and I think water meters or some type of new system. And I believe there are still a couple hundred thousand dollars outstanding that they haven't committed anything to yet. It's my understanding. I believe the parks committee might be trying to come up with like a small proposal for um, some type of park amenity they want to uh, add to, to veterans park or, or another area. Is it does this does this committee want to kind of try to create a, a small pro, uh, proposal or a project um, that we can present to city council, or do we want to maybe try and vet any uh, uh, proposals that city council might have? Um, just uh, just my two cents. The park process, uh, I was on Park and Rec here for years, and and it really needs somebody dedicated to the function because you have to look at, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to start something? Do you want to add on to it? Uh, if, you know, we've got got people looking at the, the, the landing, and we've got people looking, obviously, the new the two new parks that have been put together. So I, I think... Yeah, I, th I think there's people out there that are doing it, but it's really not this committee's you know, function. It doesn't really interrelate to economics. It's it's more to the, the aesthetics of it. Well, I'm just saying maybe there is some type of project, though, that this committee could uh, propose or it, like maybe with the hotel motel. Um, if there's any way to uh, use ARPA funds for a grant or if it's just uh, incentives. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I believe there are a few hundred thousand dollars that the city hasn't committed to yet. And so I just was curious if this committee wanted to um, look at that, propose anything or maybe vet any other options that the city comes up with. Not sure if the city. Is able to take the standard allowance or not for ARPA funds, but. If not, they're to consider is there's criteria on how you can spend those funds. So that might be the challenge. Is for an, it's not meant to be an economic development driver, even though some projects would meet the criteria plus be an economic development driver. But that would be something to consider if the committee is going after our kind of project. You have to sh show the that it meets criteria, unless the city took the standard allowance, and there's some more flexibility in how those funds are spent. So yeah, I, th I think the challenge uh, is going to be the different asks that have come through, uh, which date back all the way to the first time this came to council back in October, I believe, of last year. Um, it, whether or not they fit within the the guidelines of, of the the final rule published by the Treasury Department, um, I'm not going to speak on a, as to you know, what's allowable or not allowable. I'm going to defer that to the city attorney and city council meetings, but I, I think that's could be the a hurdle. Um, there's a, to, to Robbie's point, there's uh, just over $700,000 left uh, that has not been allocated uh, out of the original 1.65 or 1.68 million. Um, dollar uh, amount and city council will be evaluating the rest of the um, requests received to date again it's going to be a work session on the 22nd so they're not going to be making any decisions as to what's going to be funded or not funded uh, but it will help them kind of narrow down their decision making i had a question i generally understand that arpa you know it's government money that it can be used Different over limited capacity for specific things. Can things like water and sewer lines be paid through HARPA, or is that I know you don't want to get too specific, but is that that 
generally a yes or generally or no? Yeah, I can, I can speak to at least the infrastructure uh, be, because that is the clearest category. Uh, there, there are four major categories uh, to the uh, ARPA. Uh, coronavirus state local fiscal recovery funds, as it's officially called, uh, those were the direct payments to local governments. Uh, so wa wastewater and water projects that are infrastructure, uh, those are pretty broadly eligible. Uh, I, I think they even dialed back some of the restrictions uh, in the final rule. Um, but uh, yes. Did you have something in specific in mind? A couple things in mind, but I need to think about it. Okay. Okay. Not anything else? We're done. Adjourned. Next month. Did not approve minutes. We approve the agenda. Yes, thank you so much. For reopening. For reopening. Oh, yes. Minutes. Last month. Yeah. <laughs> have a, make a motion since you can't. You can't. Well, that's right. Well, that's right. Please, 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 please. Please. You guys are one of you. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Brian. Second. And, and can we have a vote? Aye. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. We've got an extra 22 minutes in your day.